So we'll start with the data and then we'll develop a linear model and assess variance inflation factor using VIF command. And then we'll do perturbation analysis with numerical independent variables. And then we'll do the same thing by adding a categorical variable. So let's uh, get started with data and this data that I'm using is in library called CAR and the name of data set is Duncan with D capital. So this Duncan data set or data frame has 45 rows and four columns. This is data on prestige and other characteristics of 45 US occupations in 1950. So this is old data just for illustration. And then we attach this data. So if you like to look at uh, what exactly is this data set, we can do a quick head. So you can see there are four columns and you have uh, three columns which are seem to be quantitative and profession is basically divided into three categories. So let's do a structure. So this variable type has three levels. It is a categorical variable or a factor variable and it takes values like BC, PROF and WC. Other three variables income, education and prestige are all integer variables. If you want to know more details about what exactly is this type so we can put question mark and Duncan. So you can see type is type of occupation and the three levels are prof which represents professional and managerial and WC represents white collar jobs or professions and BC is blue collar and other variables are also similarly defined. We can also do summary. Out of 45, we can see BC has 21 data points. Prof is represented in 18 data points. White collar job type is represented in six. Now let's plot these quantitative variables, income, education, and prestige, and see what we get. So we'll use pairs. We want to plot only quantitative variables, so we'll ignore type for the time being. So this is like second column, this is third, this is fourth, from two up to four. And let's create some room here. So this is what we get. And you can see between education and income, there seems to be somewhat linear relationship. In fact, all three scatter plots indicate some amount of linear relation. Let's go ahead and make a linear model. We'll store the results in M1 to represent model 1. And we'll create a model for prestige where income and education will be independent variables. So we run the model. We can look at the summary now. So you can see both income and education are statistically significant. We see three stars here. This model overall is also statistically significant. P-value is very, very small. We can look at ANOVA. So this is just the ANOVA table. And both income and education, as you can see, are statistically significant with the very small p-values. We can also do VIF, variance inflation factor. We get these two values like 2.1, 2.1. It's much below 10. So we can say that uh, there is absence of any multicollinearity problem. So now let's do perturbation analysis with numerical independent variables. So we'll make use of perturb package. 
we'll use this uh, function or package perturb and store the results in let's say p1 so we are going to use model 1 for that so let me explain uh, what this line does so this uh, perturbation analysis is used for assessing the impact of small random changes in variables income and education on the model basically we assess using the model m1 how much impact small changes in these two variables will have on the coefficients that we had when we developed this model m1 so going back if you look at the coefficients the first one is 0.59873 and for education this coefficient is 0.54583 so by introducing small random changes in income and education we want to assess what impact they are going to have on these coefficients like if the coefficients change significantly by large amount obviously there is some problem so when we run this model it will re-estimate model coefficients about 100 times using p range we are introducing the variability in these two variables and this one stands for standard deviation so we are using a standard deviation of one for income as well as education let's run this line and also check uh, what we get by running p1 so you'll notice that we have 101 rows let's go at the top so these are all the outputs this is the formula we used this is the standard deviation we used for both independent variables we use normal distribution to create these random variations with a standard deviation of one the first row is basically our original model so if you look at this coefficient value of negative 6.064 663 so this is the same value as we have in original model similarly for income you have 0.59873 so you have 0.59873 and similarly you have this coefficient for education so this first row is same as the original model and then next hundred rows represent small changes in income and education with the help of a standard deviation of size 1 from a normal distribution and you can see how the coefficients are changing for these 100 values so 100 is the default we can change a number of iterations by doing n i t e r for number of iterations and let's say we want to do it for 200 200 times so this will give us 201 rows first one will be the original model and next 200 will be the new ones so you can see now you have 201 rows we can also do summary p1 so summary p1 gives us basically the average standard deviation minimum and maximum so you can see the coefficient for income the average is 0.599 and standard deviation is 0.011 whereas for education coefficient uh, average is 0.545 and standard deviation is slightly better at 0.009 so we don't see anything really unusual we don't see any large changes in these coefficients if there is really any collinearity problem then these estimates uh, are going to be very unstable and we'll see large variations in the values now let's uh, do perturbation analysis by introducing that uh, categorical independent variable also so we'll store the results in p2 So now we'll do perturbation analysis which includes both numerical and categorical independent variables and for this uh, we'll start by making a second model we'll call it m2 so our linear model is now prestige as a function of income education and 
type that's the third variable which is categorical so we run this you can look at the summary so you can see for type uh, we have two rows now one for p r o f another for w c white collar and both of them indicate statistical significance although not as much as income and education but we have at least some statistical significance indicated using one star we can do ANOVA so ANOVA also indicates that all three variables are statistically significant you can see p-values are quite small we can do VIF so you can see the values are less than 10 we don't see any major problem and let's also do perturbation analysis by introducing small changes to income education and type and see what impact it has on the estimates so we'll store this in p2 so till here everything is same as what we did earlier and now we have to add something new we introduce p FAC so this is specific to the factor variable or categorical variable type so this command uh, will re-estimate the model M2 about 100 times by using random values from normal distribution with a standard deviation of 1 for income and education and then what this part is going to do is this will reclassify probabilities with 95% probability of reclassification to the same category so which also means that 5% of the time it will be reclassified in some other categories so that way it will introduce variation in the variable type and then we'll assess what is the impact of that on the model estimates so let's uh, run this so if I type P2 you can see it will give how the values are changing for example the original value for intercept is this and you can see from the earlier model that the intercept is negative 18503 so negative 18.18503 so first row is same and then you can see the coefficients are changing for income education and type prof and type wc if you look at type prof original estimate is 16.657 but we see that it is changing rather dramatically sometimes it is quite low in fact sometimes it is negative and sometimes very high like 18 and so on so let's uh, look at a summary so for income average is 0 0.603 and standard deviation 0 0.038 Similarly for education 0.393 and standard deviation also seems to be reasonably small. But for type prof and type WC you can see variability is huge. And in fact uh, the estimates for the coefficient for type prof although average is 13.2 but sometimes it goes as low as negative 6.449 and sometimes as high as 24.36. So a lot of variation there. Similarly, for type WC, the estimates change from negative 5 to negative 25. So, when we run this line and re estimate model like 100 times, uh, every time you run this, those 100 re estimates will be different because of different random numbers. So, for example, let me run this again. And if I run the summary, you can compare and see that coefficient average was earlier negative 1.51 now it has changed to negative 1.89 similarly you can see type prof average was 13.23 this is 12.336 so just for illustration let me use n itr equals 5 and we run this line and we have those five iterations first line is same as the original model uh, next five rows indicate re-estimates of the model using the parameters that we have indicated now if you run this again and look at the values again you may see that this is like negative 2.6011 
then now you have totally different value negative 3.5 something similarly last one you have negative 0 0.87 and here you have totally different number this is because of randomization so if you want to freeze this and get the same results again and again you can use a set dot seed and give any number you like i'm going to give one two three four we run this line and we run the next line and let's only look at the coefficient table so we get these numbers now if i repeat this starting with set dot seed and again look at the coefficient table you can compare and see we get exactly same result so negative 7.0 negative 7.0 0 0.074 0 0.074 and so on so you can use this uh, set dot seed to fix or freeze the outcome you want to see also when you print uh, summary p2 you'll notice that apart from summarization of mean standard deviation minimum and maximum for each variable you are also given reclassification probabilities below so these are the original values and this is reclassified so although we gave 95 percent it generally will vary around that 95 percent so 96.3 percent of the data points originally belong to bc blue collar jobs and they were reclassified as bc similarly 95.8 percent were originally prof and they were reclassified as prof only about uh, less than five percent were misclassified so you can see 96.3 percent originally belonged to bc were reclassified as bc but a small percentage about 2.3 percent and 1.3 percent were reclassified into other categories